It's TK Friday, and today on the Joy of Editing, in honor of the past solar eclipse, we're doing an image today I'm entitling Moon Over Joshua Tree. This is another full edit. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing. It is TK Friday, my favorite day of the week, and today... We're doing a full edit of an image shot by Bruce Rawlinson, and this image was taken at Joshua Tree National Park with a beautiful moon over the top of the scene. For a little background, Bruce sent me two images, one that he shot for the foreground and then another one that he shot for the moon itself to get the exposure right. Now on the moon image, I basically just pulled back the exposure a little bit. And then on the other image, I made some basic edits here. I just want a relatively flat image going into Photoshop because I'll be using the TK9 plugin for Photoshop to help me edit this image. Now I adjusted the white balance a little bit, opened up the exposure, uh, just gave it a slight amount of contrast, used the linear profile for Bruce's camera, adjusted my highlights and shadows and white and black point, added some texture on this one because we have some nice rocks in the foreground, a little bit of clarity. And then as far as detail, a little bit of sharpening with some masking. And then for lens corrections, I always uh, check on remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. And that is it. Then I selected both images, right click on the image and then come to edit in. And then what you want to do is come down to open as layers in Photoshop, so click that and that'll open those two images up as layers in Photoshop. And here's what it looks like in Photoshop. Photoshop, you can see here's the moon properly exposed and here is the foreground properly exposed. What I did was used an object selection tool, selected the moon, and then on the combo panel, I clicked the contract button just to contract that a little bit and I contracted it like five pixels, clicked OK. That just pulls it in a little bit. And then I feathered the edge by clicking the feather button, and I gave it a three pixel feathering, clicked OK. And then I did a command or control J just to jump it up to its own layer, shut this layer off. And now you can see there it is. There is the before, there's the after. And then I used the transform tool, command or control T. And what I did was made the moon a little bit bigger. You can hold the option key down just to constrain that to the center, made it a little bit bigger just because I think it looks a little bit better. And then I typed enter or return to accept the transformation. And then on the combo panel, I click flatten just to flatten the image. And we'll start from here. There were some buildings up here that I got rid of. I didn't think was adding to the image, so I took those out. There were some dust spots on the sky, so I got rid of those for you. Now you can download this image just the way it is along with the PDF notes to help you out, so do that. You'll find those in the description below this video. Click more to open up the description, scroll down, and you will find Dropbox links for the image as well as the PDF notes. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. Thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. Now, as always, I like to balance out the sky and the foreground separately just to bring balance and contrast to the image. And I typically start out by holding my command or control key down and clicking on the sky selection. But I had a problem. I'll go ahead and command or control click on the sky button to show you. And there's my sky. Now, if we look at that sky, you can see it has removed the moon from the sky. So Photoshop was getting confused. So I had to go about this a different way. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that sky by dragging it to the trash can. And I'll deselect by clicking this button on my combo panel. Here's how I got around that problem. Instead of command or control clicking, just click on the sky button and the sky will get selected. Then come up to the multi mask panel and click this button right here for edit selection. And now we can see our mask and we can just grab a white paintbrush at 100% opacity and paint over the moon so it's selected. And then what I did, I figured I wanted to clean up this edge a little bit. So I went ahead and grabbed the burn tool and just came along the edge and just cleaned up the edge like so. And then I went and grabbed the dodge tool and cleaned up the edge where the sky 
meets the horizon there. And then I went ahead and clicked this save button, you know, called it sky and clicked OK. I already saved that out and I'm just going to click cancel. And then I click the invert button. So now I have the foreground and click save for name. I gave it foreground and clicked OK. And then I X out of here. And now, as always, if you watch my TK Friday videos, you know I do this. I come up and click on the luminosity mask button, click on midtones three to protect me from blowing out the lightest lights and blocking up the darkest darks, meaning there'll be no detail in the lightest lights and darkest darks. And then I output that to a color grading tool by clicking this button. And there you can see that Midtones 3 mask on there. And then I click this button to duplicate that layer. And then I make the first layer active. And we can start with the foreground to add balance and contrast. And then we'll move on to the sky. Next, we need the layer mask calculator. You'll find it on the combo or CX panel. Hold your command or control key down and click on the mask calculator button. That will keep it open until you click X to close it. And we're working on the foreground, so we'll click on foreground because we want to intersect the foreground with the mids 3 mask. And now you can see only the foreground with the mids 3 mask. Click on the top color grading layer because that's going to be for the sky. Click on sky in the mask calculator. Click X. And now we intersect the sky with the mids 3 mask. We don't need the mask calculator now, so click X and make the foreground layer active. Now you can rename these layers as long as you keep TK inside of parentheses. Like I could call this foreground with TK in parentheses, as you see right here. And now for the balance and contrast, I'm going to click on my shadow button first and darken up my shadows a little bit. And I'll darken them to right there, a minus nine. Now we'll click on the midtone button and I just want to lighten up the midtones a little bit. And I'm going to drag this slider over to right there, plus 17. Now I want to do a little color grading on this. I want to warm up the midtones and cool down the shadows. And all you need to do, see my cursor tip, you can click anywhere on this color wheel and add a color grade. You see that? I can go into the blue tones, whatever you want. But I have a specific number in mind, so I'm just going to grab that number off my notes. I'm going to double click right here and then type in the number from my notes. And that's a hex number, it's 878B77, and that represents a color, so I'm gonna click this button to accept it, and there you can see it right there. And now I'll click on my shadow button, and double click this field, and I'll enter in the hex number for the cool tones. And there is that number. I'll click this button to accept it. So there is my color grade. So I'll shut this layer off by clicking on the eye. Here's before, and there is after. I believe this image was shot in the blue hour, so I want to maintain that look. I don't want to over brighten up this image, but you can interpret this image any way that you like, but this is the way that I am interpreting it. Now we'll work on the sky, so let's click on the sky layer to make it active. And all I want to do here is click on the midtone button. I'm just working with midtones, and I just want to darken up the midtones to bring them in line with the scene to right there minus 19 and I do want to cool them off and I do have a hex number already which you'll find on my notes. That number is 636873 and just click this button to accept it and there is that color grade. So let me shut off the sky layer. Here is before and here is after and then if we click this button on the combo panel we can see the overall before and the after and already I think we're off to a good start. Well, let's keep going. Now, as I study the image, I'm thinking I'd like to lighten up the overall midtones and give them a little bit of a contrast boost. So what I'll do is close the color grading tool so I can get to my multi mask panel. And you'll notice nothing changes on our color grading layer. Click the luminosity mask button, and then we'll simply click on midtones one. That's going to give us a gentle lifting of the midtones. We're going to output that to a curves adjustment layer. There's a great blend mode for lightning, and that's the screen blend mode. So we'll click on the screen blend mode button on either the combo or CX panel. See how the midtones lighten up. On the curve itself, I'm going to use a preset. So there's a drop down here. Right now it's on default, just the linear straight line. I'm going to click on strong contrast RGB and see how we get that little bit of a contrast bump. It boosts the color up a little bit, boosts the contrast. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. And that looks really nice. The next adjustment will just be a gentle darkening of the shadows. And to do that, I'll do a global burning. We'll click on the luminosity mask button again. And I went through my darks, like darks one, darks two. The light areas will be getting the adjustment. Here's darks three. And I think darks three will be the one. I'll, I'll put that to a curves adjustment layer. I'm only using that curves adjustment layer for a blend mode. I'm going to click on the multiply blend mode 
it's the counterpart to screen which will darken and you'll notice the shadows all get darkened but that's way too dark so what i'm going to do is pull back on my opacity so i'm going to pull that opacity down to like 43 percent right there now it's affecting my sky and i don't want that but we could take care of that very easily by clicking on our mass calculator button you'll notice we have a sky and a foreground channel so click on sky and click minus to subtract it and now the sky is out of that adjustment but we can go a little further here i don't want the darkening to go into my darkest shadows so we can use blend if to help us with the mask we've already made so click the edit blend if button and now watch what happens when I click on No Darks 2. You'll notice that now the very dark darks are not getting the adjustments. Pretty cool. And if you uncheck gray, you can see without Edit Blend Diff, there's before and there's after. You can combine a mask you make with a multi-mask panel with Blend If for more refined masking. Next, I want to do some freehand burning, and this gives you a chance to use your artistic skills. But we're going to let Blend If help us out on this one. So don't be afraid of this next step because I know you can do it. Now, go up to your Combo or CX panel and find the burn tool. It has two sides. The left side's 50% gray. The right side is a transparent pixel layer. You can use either side for this. I'll use the right side. It doesn't really matter here. And what we're going to do is get a brush with a 10% opacity. Type your one key. You're set up with a black brush. Make that brush a little smaller. And make sure you have a nice soft edge on it, like 0% hardness. So we have some nice feathering here. But before we start painting on this, let's get Blend If set up. We already have the Blend If panel open. What I want you to do is click on Darks 2. That'll limit it to the Darks 2 area, which will help us. Now, notice this area right here. I'm going to paint across here one time. See what it looks like when I lift the brush and paint again, it'll get a little darker. And if I come here, paint once, paint again, it gets darker yet. So remember that. Because the way I set my brush up is to have flow at 100%. Some use flow differently than I do, but I find I get the best results this way. If you have a way you like to do it, do it your way. Okay, so I'm going to start painting on here. I'm going to get us started here just to show you. I'm just looking for little dark areas. And remember that blend diff is really helping us out. And you can alter your brush size as you're painting here. See that boulder there? You know, you can make it more three-dimensional looking. Any dark areas, you don't have to paint on all the dark areas, even back here on this distant area over in here. So I'm just looking for dark areas and like down on these boulders here, maybe I'll make this a little darker. Now I'm not going to paint the entire boulder, just certain areas to make it look interesting. And this is where you have to use your artist license, as Bob Ross would say. I love Bob Ross. But remember, Blend If is helping you out here. So I'm just painting here. So, so far, let me shut this off. Here is before and here's after. Already you can see how cool this is, right? Now, if you overdo it, you always have this opacity that you can pull back in the end if you need to. I almost forgot to tell you one thing that's kind of important because when you're painting along the edges up in here, you might get into the sky and get some bleed over. So what you can do is click on your mask calculator button, click on sky, and click minus to subtract it. You'll put a mask over the sky. This way you can be sloppy up here and it won't hurt you. So it's a safety net and we need safety nets sometimes. I know I do. Now that you know my freehand burning technique, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up because this video would get too long if you watch me do the entire foreground. Then I'll get back and show you my results. But before I go, this is very important. Because I started to burn and I was burning on my mask, you don't want to do that. So after you've added that mask, click on the blank pixel there, or you'll be wondering, what the heck? Nothing is happening. I don't want that to happen to you. It happened to me. And through the miracles of video editing, I am back. Now, this is before the burning of the foreground. And let me turn this layer on. Here is after. Again, before and after. Now remember, if it's too strong, you can always take your opacity and pull it back. And just dial it in the way you like it. But I'm going to leave it up full and I want to make sure you can see it. And also, by the way, let me shut off the Edit Blend If layer and watch the image. Without the Edit Blend If protection, it would look like this. 
It's a real mess, right? But look what Edit Blend If did for me. And it'll do it for you too, I guarantee you. So give it a try. Now, moving on, as I study the image, I think it needs the midtones lifted up a little bit more and warmed up. So I'm going to use the color grading tool for that. I need to get to the multi mask panel. So I'll click the X to close Edit Blend If. Click on the color grading tool button, and there's a color grading layer right there. I'm not going to use any masking on this. I'll click on the midtone button and open up those midtones a little bit. Now, when you move slide to slider, you don't see a change until you release the left click of your mouse. And I'm going to take this over to right here. 15 plus 15. Now I want to slightly warm up those midtones. So I'm going to click right here and drop a puck. There it is right there. You see it? And now what I want to do is just darken up the shadow slightly. So click on the shadow button and I'll just pull this back to like right there a minus nine. Now let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after and I like it. But you know what? I do not like it in the sky. So here is what I will do. Click on my trusty layer mask calculator. Click on sky. Click minus to subtract out the sky. And now it's only in the foreground. Now this mask makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Because I did warm up the midtones. And I don't want to warm up that sky in any way. So we definitely needed to mask out that sky. Now what I want to do next is, you see these, I believe these are yucca plants, or maybe these are the Joshua trees coming up. And the yellow in here, yellowish green, I want to lighten that up and give it a little more saturation. Not much. So to do that, I can use a color mask. Now right now the color grading tool is in the way, so I'll click the X. And now we'll click on this button right here to get a color mask. And I want to sample like right about here, that color, and click OK and see what kind of a mask we get. OK, so that's looking pretty good. I can isolate these a lot more by taking this top slider because there's a lot of reds still in the image on the boulders and so on. So if I start to drag this into the right, you see how those boulders drop out to maybe right about there. And then what I can do is lighten that up. So let me go ahead and lighten this up a decent amount. Not too much, maybe right about there. Maybe move this over a little bit more just to isolate a little bit more. Now the moon's up there, so you can click on this black brush and change your opacity to 100%. You can type your zero key. That's a shortcut. I'll make my brush larger and just paint off that moon because I don't want that moon in the adjustment. I'm going to output this to a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking this button. And now for the adjustment, I think I'll start with the lightness just to lighten it up. So I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the right. See how it's targeting those, whatever they are, yucca plants, yucca plants, Joshua trees. I don't know. Tell me. Let me know in the comments section below. And now let's increase their saturation a bit. I'm going to start to drag this to the right a good bit over to like right here, plus 55. And maybe I'll shift the hue just slightly. I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the right, right here, plus 13. Let me shut this off. Here is before and here's after. See how it makes those just pop a little bit. And that excites me. The next thing I want to do is close off the top of the image just to keep us into the frame. And to do that, we use a gradient tool. But first, we'll get a curves adjustment layer. So we'll click on the curves adjustment layer button. Click on the black mask button on the combo or CX panel that puts a black hide all mask on it. Click the multiply darkening blend mode button to put that in multiply blend mode. And now click on your gradient tool. And now make sure you're on the new gradient, not the classic gradient, the new gradient and the drop down menu here. I always like to open up this basics folder and click on this guy right here, black to white. And then I always like to make sure it's in reverse. So it's painting white to black. And next, what I'll do is just click and drag down. I'll hold down my shift key to constrain this to go straight. And I'll drag it down to say right about here and release the left click of my mouse. If you don't want to see this line, just click on the curves icon that goes away. It's still there if you click on the mask, but click on the curves icon. And now let's drop the opacity because it's way too dark. And I'm going to take it back to, I think, right here. 59, 59%. I think that's good. Now, I realize on a blue hour shot like this, the you would not have a darker gradient in the sky, but I think for the image, it looks really nice. 
So you can leave that off if you want to, even put a light gradient up there if you'd like. Now the gradient is darkening the moon a little bit, so let me shut this off. There's before, there's after. If you wanted that moon to go lighter, I think it looks good and I want to leave it the way it is, but here's what you could do to change that. Just come up and click on this button to go into edit layer mask mode and click on the black brush and make your brush about the size of the moon like that and just give it a click and you fix that issue if that's what you want. I'm going to step back a step by clicking this button right here because I like it the way it is. But if you want it lighter, you can do that. I do want to close off the bottom of the image. I want to do a gradient down here, a linear gradient, but on a slight angle. Now we can get a little clever right here. We already have this gradient for the top. So what we can do is click this button and copy that. Now that doubles up that gradient, but now that opposes a problem, but we can take care of that. Let me show you. Right now I don't have my gradient tool, so I'll click on my gradient tool. And I forgot to mention also, make sure you have this first button click for linear gradient. And what I'm going to do is just click out here and drag. And you notice that gradient higher on the left side. I'm going to drag it up to somewhere right about here. I think that looks pretty cool. I like that little angle on there. Something a little different for a change, and I really like that effect. Hey, by the way, don't forget to comment in the comment section below, and this really helps my YouTube channel. When you do that, you are supporting my channel because then YouTube lets my videos get out to more people. So please do that. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's also a big help in supporting the joy of editing with yours truly, Dave Kelly. Now that gradient is too strong, so remember, if you don't want to see that line, click on the curves icon. You'll notice it's at 59% because I did copy it, but that's still too strong. So let me go ahead and pull back that opacity to right there, 28%. I'll shut this layer off by clicking this eye. Here's before and here's after, and I like the way that looks on that angle. What do you think? Now, as I study this image, these areas up here in the foreground, these light areas are a little too light, so I can burn those down. We'll freehand burn them down with no nets, no blend if, no nothing. We're just gonna click on the burn tool. You could use either side. I'll click the transparent side. I'm gonna drop my brush opacity to 5%. Now the shortcut is 05 to get you to 5%. And with a decent sized brush, I'm just gonna start to paint. Now that 5%, it builds up very slowly. So every time I lift that brush and paint over these areas, they get a little bit darker. You see that? Just to keep our eyes out of this area, your eyes are always drawn to the lightest parts of the image. So we want to maintain some balance here. And we don't want to say, hey, I want you to really look at these areas. Because I don't. I want you to look at the overall image. And it's just a really minimal burning. But I think it's very helpful. Now let me shut this off. Here is before and here's after. See what that does? Now I think I've overdone it. But that's not a problem. Because we have our friend, the opacity slider for the layer. So let's just pull this off. I'll take the whole way off and then just build it up slowly and stop where I think it looks good. And I'm thinking maybe right there around 71%. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. And I like it. I like to call these kind of adjustments paying attention to the details of the image. Let that image speak to you. And it does speak to you. And then you just respond with an edit. The next thing I want to do is I study this image. I'm feeling I need to lighten up the midtones and add a little bit more midtone contrast. So to do that, I'm going to click on the luminosity mask button. Now you have three midtones. Midtones one. See how dull that is? It's a very minimal midtone adjustment when you use this as a mask. Here's midtones two. It's a little lighter. And here's midtones three, the lightest of the midtones. Now they're all midtones adjustments, by the way but this will give you more of an effect. And that's what I want here. I'm gonna output this to a curves adjustment layer, put it in the screen blend mode. Now it got really light, right? Oh, but don't worry about it, we're not done here. And now I wanna add contrast. So I'm gonna pull up on this curve like this for the highlights and down for the shadows. Somewhere like this, isn't that getting really pretty? Like somewhere right around there. Now I think it's too strong, so I'm gonna take the opacity, our friend, take it off and build it up slowly and stop where I think it looks just right. I don't wanna destroy the blue hour of this image. I think it looks really pretty. And I think right there at 43% is it. On second thoughts, I wanna pull it back a little bit more and 
I think maybe right about there, 34%. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here is after, before and after. I think I like that better. Now, when I study the image, you know, where I closed off the bottom, I think I want that a little darker. So I'm going to come back to that layer, which is right here. Click on it, make it active. And then with the opacity, I'm going to go ahead and drag this to the right a little bit, just to darken that up a little bit more, I think to right there. Let me shut this layer off. Here's before, here's after. Okay. So I think I like that. I like that little extra darkness right there. Now I'm going to click on the top layer, make it active. I have one more adjustment to do. Now, one thing I want to say about this workflow, it's non-destructive. You could come back a week later and come and change things here, you know, because it sometimes it pays to get away from the image for a day or two and then come back and look at it. And you might say, what the heck was I thinking? I have this too dark, I have this too light, so you can come and readjust if needed. The last thing I want to do is use one of my favorite TK Actions. If your actions aren't open, click your TK Action button. I'm using Color Loom, I'm going to click on this, and the layer is called Color Luminosity because we are adjusting Color Luminosity. These adjustments may deviate from my notes a little bit because I edited that original image the day before to get you the notes, but today maybe my eyes are seeing this different, I don't know, we'll see. Now this works with a black and white adjustment layer in the luminosity blend mode, but Tony sets this up so when you shut this layer off, you don't see a change in your image. So it gives you a starting point because the black and white adjustment would look totally different than this. So I'm gonna start with reds and you know, I might shift them to the right. No, I'm gonna go to the left and stop where I think it looks good. I think right there. Now I'm gonna go to yellows, lighten the yellows. No, maybe just a little bit, maybe right about there and now there's not much green in here let me see if anything is happening a little bit right there i think is good now let's check the cyans mainly in the sky so i can darken the sky lighten the sky i think maybe right about here looks good and now the blues do we want to lighten them no do we want to darken them maybe a little bit i don't know maybe right there see if there's any magenta in here not much maybe back in that heel I can darken that background hill a little bit. I think it's a hill, maybe right there. Let me shut this off. Here is the before and here is the after, the before and the after. Man, it's pretty minimal, right? Let me make my reds a little bit darker. Yes, I like that. Let me make my sky, do I want it darker? Maybe, nah, right, right about. And I think right about there. Man, decisions, decisions. Here's before and here's after. And I think I like that right there. Now let's check the overall before and after by clicking this button on my combo panel or you also find it on your CX panel. We started out here and now we end up here. Now there was one thing I did also in the notes. I put these two layers in a group. So the top layer is active. Hold your command key down and click right about here and we have both of these layers selected. We can put those in a group with a white mask. The group button has two sides. The left side gives you a black mask. The right gives you a white mask. So let's click on the right side, put these in a group. And if we want to with a brush about the size of the moon, I'll hover the brush right over the moon and hit the right bracket key. And that's right about the size of the moon right there. And I have a black brush. I'm gonna change my opacity to 100% by typing my zero key. And then what I'll do is I'll just click right here. And that takes the adjustment off the moon. So let me shut this whole group off. Here's before and here's after. And don't forget, you can adjust the entire group opacity with the opacity slider if you're on the group itself. Well, there it is. Moon over Joshua Tree image by Bruce Rawlinson. Thank you, Bruce, for the use of your image. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then each time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.